VIP Kid Teachers, Teacher Lindsay here. It has been about a year, well not quite a year, since I posted a couple of videos about painting cookie sheets for reward systems. I have several videos in my YouTube channel um, about how I painted cookie sheets because they're automatically magnetic and I'm a fan. And then I of course um, have mentioned in many, many times in my videos how much I love foam. So this video is to answer the literally hundreds of emails, Facebook messages, um, all kinds of, of, of uh, people contacting me, asking me what the best way is to paint the cookie sheet. Um, because if you just try to paint directly on a metal cookie sheet with just, you know, with craft paints, it's not going to work. So this video is going to be super quick. Here's how you paint the cookie sheets. I'm sure there's many ways to do it, um, but this is the way I've done it, and so this is my tips for you. Number one, I use the cookie sheets from Walmart. They're 88 cents. Actually, I just got online to check if you can get them online, and this pizza pan one, and I always know it's the one because it has this picture, looks like they raised the price to $1.57, but, it's been 88 cents every one I've bought for the last couple of years. And the rectangle cookie sheets, these, okay, are still 88 cents. And if you order them online, they're $1.57. So I'm going to include the link in the description to order the $1.57 ones online from Walmart because um, in case you can't find a cheaper version or your dollar store ones, they tend to be really flimsy. These are actually pretty decent considering that they're about a dollar. So this is my cookie sheet. First thing I do, take off the paper. Okay, you know, it's got this sticky stuff on it. These little sticky goopies, right? You just peel the goop off. All right, so let's just pretend that I already did it. In fact, you know what? I'm just gonna turn it over. Let's pretend this is the side. This is gone. Now, you can see that it's really shiny and when you feel it, it's got a film. It's, you know, it's got a coating on it or something. So here's what you have to do before you spray paint. You can either rub it down with a little bit of a degreaser, but I like this even better. And because I refinish furniture as a side hobby, I have lots of sandpaper. So you take a very fine grit sandpaper, that means the numbers on the sandpaper are high, 300 something. This one happens to be 220. Um, so the sand, sandpaper is finer, the higher the number. So you get this, and I just do a quick, ooh, that's a horrible noise, okay. And give it a little bit of a, you can't really see in the video, but if you give it a quick sand, it'll get off that film. You just wanna make sure that the paint can adhere to the pan, okay? Now, second thing I do is I use a spray paint primer. Now the spray paint primer is five or six dollars, but with one can of spray paint primer, you can paint, I don't know, a hundred reward systems. So it's really a pretty good investment and I use it spray paint for all kinds of things. So. Um, there's a couple of different kinds I have used. I have used the 99 cent spray primer from Walmart. Um, I do like this Rust-Oleum specifically for clean metal primer. So this means it is designed to bond to the metal and then it dries pretty quickly so you can put a top coat on top of it. So it comes in all different colors. Usually I just have a white and a black because for some cookie sheets, I like the background to be light colored like this. Okay, I painted this one yellow, but only after I spray primed it white. The other kinds, some I have done, like the black backgrounds. Well, talk about that kind of a mess in a minute. Where's my other black background? So like the black backgrounds, sometimes I will, if it's gonna be a dark blue or a black, I'll spray prime it with the black. But best tip is to buy the spray primer. Rust-Oleum is awesome for clean metal. Okay, you let that dry completely. Then you can use spray paint to put another, a plain layer of color, just a regular old crafty spray paint from wherever. Or you can use acrylic craft paints. So I have my acrylic, I think these are just the cheap Apple Barn, Walmart, 
I get them at Walmart. I have about a million. They're like 50 cents. The thing about the acrylic craft paints is that if you put on just one layer, okay, let me show you. This is, okay, so this is my pan with the spray primer, and then I put a layer of light blue on it, and then this is the first coat of acrylic craft paint in green. Wah, wah. So I have to let that dry, but it dries really quick. And then I put another layer on, so it's sort of a process. What I kind of do is I'll paint this, and then when it's drying, I might paint the clouds, and then when the clouds are drying, I go back and I put another layer of the green, and then when the green is drying, I'm... so it, it doesn't take all that long because it's not a very big space, and because these little craft paints dry really quickly. The old, uh, other thing you could do if you want to paint but not use craft paint, one of my most favorite things is to go to Lowe's or Home Depot or wherever, and certain of their brands, you can actually buy pre-made samples right off the shelf. This was two two dollars and ninety eight cents or something like that. So you're getting a small amount. It's all it comes in fun colors, modern colors, but it's actual wall paint. So you're getting like a true wall paint, water based wall paint to put on your paint uh, your tin. It goes on a little thicker. So however you want to do it, nothing fancy. Craft paints, sample paints from the hardware store, whatever. The most important thing is you can't put this stuff right on top of that metal cookie sheet because it will just look um, slimy and it will look see-through and it will take eight million coats to make it opaque. So if you start with, see, I've got literally on the floor here, I wish I could show you, about 20 cookie sheets. I'm trying to figure out which ones I want to grab to show you stuff. Um, so. You're going to start with the spray primer, either white or color or black. I usually just use white or black and go from there. You're going to use craft paints to paint. And I just use regular paint brushes, just from the kids craft stuff. When that's totally dry, if that's all you do, this is what will happen. Here we go. This is one of my most loved and well used reward systems, one I've had since almost the very beginning. And you can see that the black paint is chipping. I'm gonna remake this. Um, so I'm gonna kinda just show you it. It chips off because, who knows, it gets hot, it gets cold, it, I, I don't know. But eventually from the clickety clack of uh, magnets, okay, it gets, ugh. So the best way to prevent chipping and to give it your paint protection from the magnets going on and off your board is to finish it with a sealant. I use a spray sealant. Here is the trick. Don't get a satin or gloss or semi-gloss finish because then it's shiny. And in the camera, you want to avoid shiny, okay? So you buy matte finish. This says it permanently, what does that say? Protective matte finish. It eliminates the glossiness, which is what we want. And it keeps it uh, just from the paint chipping off and from getting worn. And I give this a good spray and then I let it dry overnight. And then I give it a good spray again. And then I might do, well, I, I do a few Kind of depends on what, if it's a light color, I definitely want to give it a few. Um, let me show you, let's see, this one. Now see, now this is just dirty. This is a reward that's been used quite a bit too. It started with the white primer, then I used the paints to, um, just craft paints to paint on my stuff. And uh, it's several thicknesses. You can kind of see up close. Ooh. Okay, so that's just dirt from a magnet. I need to get my magic eraser and wipe that off. But if I were to have cleaned this before the video, which would have been a good idea, um, you would have been able to see that this pan is in pretty stinking good condition still for all of the magnets going on and off for the last year. The sealant on this thing has kept it in pretty good shape. It just needs to be cleaned. Okay. Once your sealant is dry, you are good to go. Only recommendation I have is try to store the sheets upright with something in between, like a piece of foam or a piece of cardboard or a 
file folder or something so that the metal cookie sheets are not clinking on each other in your storage bin, wherever you grab them from. So I hope that was helpful. If you have any questions, leave me a comment and I will get back to you.